All right, in this training demonstration, we're going to go through uh, walking through a closure uh, for balance, and then additionally, um, the scan we're looking at has a right lateral excursion attached to it. Um, and so we'll focus on how to or what to look for during excursions to help us make good adjustment decisions. And so, as we talked about in the past, uh, we'll go ahead and click on the active scan to increase the size of the window. Uh, when we're looking for balance, balancing a bite, we really only care about this A to B region. Um, and this is where first contact occurs through the maximum piece uh, or maximum intercuspation. Where, and when we look at uh, an excursion, we're focused around the C to D area because that's where the teeth are separating or discluding during the sliding motion. And in this case, it's a right lateral. But first, let's start in the A to B. So again, we've talked about it in the past. Uh, once you've done your multi-bite, pick your best bite, and you want to start to evaluate starting at the A. You want to get a good clear picture of what the center of force pattern's doing. Again, this uh, version, we're getting this um, kind of zigzag movement, it, but it's centralized on the left side. And so if we wanted to find the first contact or first one or two contacts, we would play from the A and just click with our right arrow key on our keyboard, a few clicks, and start trying to find the forces on the um, left side that are rising faster than the rest. And you can see there's 15 right in the center. It's definitely rising faster than the rest. Additionally, there's a few more contacts as the gray bar is moving towards B that you may also find interest in adjusting. And so, again, for balancing a bite, you're just looking for high forces you start at the A, you right click through until you start to find some force discrepancies. And again, uh, this the main one here looks like 15, and that's the one you would go mark and make your adjustment. Uh, a final scenario that you would like to see, um, in this case, patient 2 through 15, assuming they have um, good dentition and fairly healthy you want to find the center of force icon moving and drifting towards the middle. You want to see the left to right have better overall left to right balance. And you want to see the teeth, for example, 2 and 15 should have similar forces in percent. So right now it's got 3.9% and 15 has got 26.5%. So a pretty large discrepancy at this point. So you would look for these contacts to have similar forces. If those three things line up, um, you should have a better, more balanced bite. Now the other thing to look at is in this case we had the person slide to the right side and just uh, using T-Scan with excursions it's um, like when we were doing for balancing you want to start at one of the letters and in this case instead of starting at A to B to balance and walking through you start at C and you walk through D. But one of the important features here is you want to know what you're looking at and so sometimes you have to adjust this D line and the best way to do that is go up to view uh, arch in quadrants and what you'll see is when I click this instead of a two red in, a red and a green line on the graph and a left and right side that are left green right red it'll move into a quadrant view so there'll be more colors so just here we go all right so you can see that there's this line here and I can move I can move it right between the two teeth or up um, the left anterior now is represented by the color green where the posterior left is this yellowish color and then red for anterior right and blue for anterior or posterior right. And so what we look for is to, we want to define the excursion and so the first thing you really need to do is make sure this bar is behind all canine contacts. So you can see that uh, this is a right lateral. I want to focus on six to make sure this bar is behind the contacts on six. You can see there's really no contact on six, but it's back there. All right, so now we can evaluate starting at C, uh, and then to, just for um, defining the excursion, you can move the D line to the point where the person gets their anterior guidance. And in this case, you can tell they're not going to get much of an anterior guidance. Um, so the D line's probably if you wanted to be technical, since you never get it, it would start all the way back here. All right, 
And that um, that can be a problem because the patient that has a, such a long time to exclude has more opportunities for interferences and creates symptoms in the muscle, muscles of the jaw that uh, could relate to TMJ. Right, so when you start evaluating, you start from C and you work your way through to D. And what you'll see is what's a great helper for evaluating your excursions is this center of force icon. Now when this person starts to slide, we would like to see this icon do a nice, smooth, straight line to the anterior canine, number six. But we get something much different. In this case, as I play the movie, pulls horizontally right up onto number three. And then it looks like it starts to pull up to five. And so you get some guidance, but very minimal. Uh, at this point, I think it's about 20% total guidance. And so what you're going to look for for an adjustment is to get rid of the space between here and really kind of get this red line to go straight up to number six. And so using this, we know that the patient, that the red line's horizontal. This indicates some type of group function, three, four, and five, which are clear. Uh, if I rewind this movie back to right before it moves north towards 5, we can see that you have a clear group function 2 through 5. This might be a starting point for an adjustment or an addition to the canine to make it steeper, but you might go in there and you adjust 2, 3, um, and 5 away, and that should prevent this pull towards the right side, this group function. May, and at the very least shorten it so that when the person begins to pull the canine takes over quicker and so it's a really good indicator of what needs to be done if this red line came posterior we would have some confidence that somewhere on two is dominating it um, but another way this tool helps us is if there's a balancing side interference what you'll tend to see if there was a contact during this excursion on 15 you'll tend to see the red line start to turn backwards or start to make little knots and that would um, be a clear way to indicate oh there's some interferences going on the uh, balancing side and then you would most likely be able to see it and you can have a quick adjustment on it so again the t-scan is really showing you some cool stuff uh, things that you wouldn't normally see just by looking um, at the scratches from the paper marks it really defines that there is a heavy force on the distal of three, and distal of two is a fairly heavy force. There is a, a light but or moderate force on two towards the lingual side. And these are clear areas that you can mark and start to make your adjustments towards and have really definitive uh, adjustments. All right, hopefully this helps everyone with an understanding of how you can use excursions um, through um, evaluating and give you better direction on your adjustments. If you're interested in learning more, um, we have courses up on our website where you can contact TechScan uh, to have a discussion with one of the trainers. We can set up time and we can do reviews of scans if that's what you, where you find um, would be best for you.